Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the introductory econometrics course. Today, we will continue our solutions to the computer exercises from 5 to 8 for Chapter 16, Simultaneous Equations Models in the textbook Introductory Econometrics, A Modern Approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's look at computer exercise 5. Use the economic report of the president to update the data in consumed, at least through 2003. Real estimate equation 16.35. We can download the annual data from 1982 to 2019 in Excel files. We use the import Excel command to import data into Stata and estimate the model by two stage least squares. We can compare the estimates with those from the example in the textbook. We have similar results. The growth in real disposable income has a significant effect on the current growth in real per capita consumption. The pure form of the permanent income hypothesis is rejected. Let's do computer exercise 6. In part 1, a static inverse supply function for the monthly growth in cement price as a function of growth in quantity is as follows. Where growth in the price of petroleum is assumed to be exogenous and monthly dummy variables are in the model. What signs do you expect for alpha 1 and beta 1. Estimate the equation by OLS. Does the supply function slope upward? According to the supply law, other things equal. The supply of cement increases as its price increases. Alpha 1 should be positive. If we see petroleum as a source to make cement, their prices should move in the same direction. Beta 1 should be positive. The OLS estimate of alpha 1 is minus 0 0.044. The fitted line does not slope upward. In part two, the variable G defense is the monthly growth in real defense spending in the United States. What do you need to assume about G defense? for it to be a good IV for GSAM. Test whether GSAM is partially correlated with G-Defense. Can you use G-Defense as an IV in estimating the supply function? In the first stage regression, we regress GSAM on G-Defense and other exogenous variables in the model. The estimate of G-Defense is not statistically significant at any reasonable level. The variable G-Defense fails to satisfy the instrument relevance requirement. 
and therefore it is not a valid IV for GSAM. In Park 3, Shay argues that the growth in output of residential and non-residential construction are valid instruments for GSAM. The idea is that these are demand shifters that should be roughly uncorrelated with the supply error. Test whether GSAM is partially correlated with the two variables. Again, do not worry about serial correlation in the reduced form. We regress GSAM on the two possible IVs and the other exogenous variables in the model. The F statistic for their significance is 16.54, which is higher than the rule of sum of 10. They satisfy the instrument relevance requirement and can be used as valid IVs for GSAM. In part 4, estimate the supply function with the IVs for GSAM. What do you conclude about the static supply function for cement? The two stage least squares estimate for alpha 1 is still negative, but not statistically different from zero. The static supply curve does not slope upward. Let's find answers to computer exercise 7. It is about example 13.9. County crime rates in North Carolina. In part 1, suppose that after differencing to remove the unobserved effect, you think delta log crime rate is simultaneous determined with delta log police per capita. In particular, increases in crime are associated with increases in police officers. What does this help to explain the positive coefficient on delta log police per capita in equation 13.40? It is an example of simultaneous causality. The government deploys more police officers to counties with a higher crime rate. It explains a positive relationship between the crime rate and the number of police officers per capita. In part 2, the variable taxes per capita is the taxes collected per person in the county. Does it seem reasonable to exclude this from the crime equation? Yes, the taxes collected seems not related to the crime rate. In part 3, estimate the reduced form for delta log police per capita using put OLS, including the potential IV, delta log taxes per capita. Does it look like it is a good IV candidate? Explain. In the first stage regression, the OLS estimate of the IV is not statistically significant at any reasonable level. So it fails to satisfy the instrument relevance requirement and is not a valid IV. In part 4, suppose that in several years, the state of North Carolina awarded grants to some counties to increase the size of their county police force. How could you use this information to estimate the effect of additional police officers on the crime rate? Suppose we assume the grants did not directly affect the crime rate and were not correlated with the error term in the crime equation. In that case, we can use a dummy variable of whether the county received the grants 
as an excluded instrument variable for Delta Log police officers, and adopt the two-stage least squares estimation. Let's solve computer exercise eight. In part one, assume that the demand equation can be written in equilibrium for each time period as follows. Treating the price variable as endogenous, what additional information do we need to estimate the demand equation parameters consistently? We need some supply shifters as the instrument variables for the endogenous price variable. The supply shifters could be the weather on the ocean that affects fishing. In part two, the variable wave two and wave three are measures of ocean wave heights over the past several days. What two assumptions do we need to make in order to use them as IVs for log average price in estimating the demand equation? The two assumptions are the instrument relevance requirement and the instrument exogeneity requirement. The former requires the endogenous variable to be sufficiently correlated with the IVs. The latter requires the IVs not to be correlated with the error term in the demand equation. In other words, the two wave variables should appear in the supply equation. But not appear in the demand equation. In part three, regress log average price on the day of the week dummies and the two wave measures. Are the wave measures variables jointly significant? What is the p-value of the test? The F statistic for the joint significance is 19.10. The p-value is 0 to 4 decimal places. The two wave variables are sufficiently correlated with the endogenous price variable. In part 4, we will estimate the demand equation by two stage least squares. What is the 95% confidence interval for the price elasticity of demand? Is the estimated elasticity reasonable? Using the two wave variables as instrumental variables for the price, the two stage least squares estimate of the price elasticity of demand is minus 0.816. The estimated elasticity is reasonable. A 10% increase in the price leads to an 8.2% decrease in demand, holding other factors constant. The 95% confidence interval is wide, from minus 1.44 to minus 0.19. In part 5, Obtain the two stage least squares residuals mu1 hat. Add a single leg mu1 hat in t minus 1 in estimating the demand equation by two stage least squares. Remember, use mu1 hat in t minus 1 as its own instrument. Is there evidence of AR1 serial correlation in the demand equation errors? The estimated coefficient on the first leg of mu1 hat is 0 0.294, with a p-value of 0 0.003. It is an evidence of an AR1 serial correlation. In part 6, given that the supply equation depends on the wave variables, what two assumptions would we need to make? in order to estimate the price elasticity of supply. To identify the supply equation, 
we need exogenous demand shifters in the demand equation that do not appear in the supply equation. They could be the dummy variables of the days of the week. To become valid instruments, we assume that the days of the week have significant partial effects on the demand. That is, they are jointly significant in the demand equation. It is required by the instrument relevance, and we can verify it in the first stage regression. The second assumption is that the days of the week dummies should not directly affect supply or be correlated with the error term in the supply equation after controlling for the wave variables. It is required by the exclusion restriction. In part seven. In the reduced form equation for log average price, are the day of the week dummies jointly significant? What do you conclude about being able to estimate the supply elasticity? The reduced form equation for the price shows that the day of the week dummies are not jointly significant with a low F statistic of zero point five three. They fail to satisfy the instrument relevance requirement. They are not valid instruments in the supply equation. Thank you so much for doing the computer exercises with me. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.